August. It is August, the beginning of August, and that means it is time for some more Batman, the long Halloween episode, man. I'm joined by the usual cast of characters uh, that's joining us in this uh, this year-long read-through of Batman, the long Halloween. We have with us uh, Mr. Brian Martin. How are you doing today, sir? Oh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm doing great. Tomorrow's Friday. I'm could not be more excited about it today if you're listening to this day goes up i guess it's sunday which is also kind of cool <laughs> uh, yes yes it is like, you're excited to be the weekend to start and they're just dreading the weekend ramping down is, yeah. is that where it's, yeah. uh, we also have with us uh our champion our draft champion mr german jackson how you doing sir pretty good it's funny funny um I'm not in the possession of the gauntlet yet. I think you're afraid that if I have both gauntlets, there might be some problems with uh, reality, maybe. <laughs> We're afraid that if you get both gauntlets, you'll be able to skip to the end of this Batman Long Halloween reading. And we can't <laughs> no, spoilers. <laughs> no spoilers. No spoilers. And then, of course, we have uh, our resident criminal in training, Mr. Ninja Dave himself. <laughs> How you doing today, Dave? Uh, for my class, classy people out uh, Give them a nice uh, Nihonese konbanwa. And for my people in the streets, hootie hoo! <laughs> <laughs> I haven't heard that since 1998. <laughs> <laughs> I've been through a hootie hoo out there. Uh, that's why we love you here, Dave. Uh, we are recording this for International Beer Day, man. Uh, we discussed that at the end of our 4th of July episode that there isn't one great unifying holiday in August. Did a little bit of Googling and uh, found out in one place, August 2nd is International Beer Day, which also happens to be the Roman's birthday, I do believe, in the long Halloween. So that's what we're here for. Now, I know, Jermon, you are not a drinker of the alcohols at all. You're not a, uh, a big beer dude. Dave, did you bring a, a beer for the beer episode? I'm afraid not. I'm actually trying to lose some of this tire here. And uh, <laughs> so I've, I've sworn off uh, alcohol for the last few months. I've been doing more... Uh, Nintendo Switch fitness boxing and drinking lots of water. Uh, right cut out sodas <laughs> and beer. So it's, it's, it's working. Uh, Brian, what did you bring to the table? So I am a, I'm drinking a, a beer from Pilot Brewing here in Charlotte. Um, Who the hell are they? Do what? Where are they? Who are they? Yes, oh, they're in, where? They're, well, they're in Plaza. They're in Plaza Midwood. Um, they've been open for... I don't know, a, a little bit now. I think they opened last year sometime. I, this is, I think, maybe the first beer I've had from them, though. I, I don't know that I've had anything from them before, but this is a uh, collaborative beer called Black is Beautiful. There's this whole movement, and a lot of craft breweries around the country are releasing Black is Beautiful beers with the proceeds going to uh, BLM or, or, or one of those organizations, right? Anyway, I, I'm drinking it because it's pitch black, like darkness, like Wesley Snipes, <laughs> levels here and uh and it's it's uh it's coconut uh stout yeah, it's, it good? It's good action going on over here it is 10 percent. not what i intended to get myself into on a thursday night but hey I mean, <laughs> yeah, well, it, 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 is it any good does it have a good taste no, it's delicious it's delicious okay. uh really smooth very very nice yeah. so mm -hmm. i've managed to smuggle a couple of the san antonio ones uh, that it all started with Weather Souls in San Antonio. Yeah. And uh, people who don't know, all of Paprika started when I lived in San Antonio. Uh, so I had a couple of people smuggle those in. I went to Free Range and got myself some as well. That black and beautiful beer is uh, delish, my friends. Uh, wherever I'm you are in the country. Try that when I come off of my, uh, my beer drought. You might want well, to like point out. I'd like to point out as well, when I made my my, uh, my tirade about not drinking beer, C just moved right along. I was like, fuck you, Dave. Just <laughs> <get me open." laughs> well, I'll yeah, we're talking you, about you don't drink beer, you're dead to me. <laughs> we're talking about International Beer Day here, so we're not talking about Water and Fitness Day. You know, I think if we had planned this out a little bit more, hey, though, you we know, could have had... has water in it. <laughs> mm, that's true. Oh, we we could have had a birthday cake. That we were all Ooh. eating, like like we could have just mailed each other slices of a birthday cake. That's My nice. coffee creamer is birthday cake right now, actually. Okay. Well, right. I did. Uh, uh, I did bring some donuts. <laughs> 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 
Boy, you, if, if you brought donuts, if you brought donuts to the Roman's birthday, you're the next one getting close. <laughs> pretty much. Pretty much. <laughs> uh, Dave, you might want to get on your purchasing of that beer sooner rather than later because it is flying off the shelf. So I don't know okay. when you're done with your holy cleanse, but uh, don't be caught I out can, in the cold. Buy one, bury it in the backyard, come I back can, in a little bit. I can buy some and just and just save it. Yeah. Yeah, and that's what, what, I, what stores can I get? Just like any. Uh, Pretty much every brewery. Uh, ABC store? I'm not an ABC, of course. But... Breweries, okay. man. You got to go to breweries to get it because I haven't seen it in stores at all. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. So all you out there listening, man, you can Google Black is Beautiful Beer. There's probably a brewery somewhere near you where they have, because they all just kind of outsourced the same recipe and everyone did little changes to it. So mm-hmm. if you go to this brewery or this brewery across the street, you're going to get two different beers. Hmm. Uh, so I really... Yeah, I really feel like they should have um, coordinated these holidays a little better because yesterday it was uh, National Chicken Wing Day. Mm, yes, it was. Yeah. Damn. Yes. I, I partook. I had me some wing stop yesterday night. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. I think I National Hot Dog Day was a week ago, too. Oh, man. Oh, We're, man. We fucked up the whole the schedule. Hot dog. Yeah. yeah, they had the hot dog eating competitions this year, didn't they? Did they? They had no. They had the hot dog eating competitions. It I was just like did, nobody yeah. was there, which is probably good because there's no, like, splashback. <laughs> I just think I'd be fe- funny if like German's version of the long Halloween is just like chicken wing day. <laughs> <laughs> it's the most weird bullshit holidays. <laughs> National Cat's Eye Marble Day. <laughs> Sleep well, Snackin' Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, and I have uh, from Big Boss Brewing Company, Aces and Eights, Ooh, which I do one. believe I had a uh, Episode of Paprika a couple weeks back is about a six-pack of it. It's a little bit of a coffee stout, and it is delish. And yes, That's Brian, it is good. Uh, 8% is what I got. It was the weakest beer in my uh, in my treasury there. Yeah, but, 10%. Uh, 10.4% is the weakest thing in my fridge right now. That is not great. Yeah, the one from San Antonio is, I think, right at like 10.2 or 10.3 or something like that. Those I'm saving. The ones that I've gotten here from Charlotte are like in the sevens somewhere. But enough about beer, man. We're going to talk about some... Uh, so we're talking, talking about some long Halloween. This is issue 11, like we said, the Roman's birthday. So let's get into what this is all about. In the Dent family basement, Gilda confronts an angry Harvey. She's found a modified 22 pistol, uh, exactly like the ones that Holiday uses. He claims as a piece of evidence, Gilda seems suspicious that he would bring the evidence home with him. Harvey <laughs> claims it is a regular occurrence and storms off. It's August 2nd, in the middle of the day. Batman comes into a dive bar in Gotham looking for the Riddler, the only person Holiday has left alive. Since Batman is not nearly as intimidating in daylight, the bartender attacks and Bats is forced to clean out the bar. He discovers the sole patron left conscious is an inebriated Riddler. Batman asks Riddler if he saw Holiday on April Fool's Day. The Riddler dodges the question. Batman asks Riddler, what was he doing in the uh, Romans building in the first place? He informs him that Falcone wanted Enigma's take on the killings and didn't like the masked criminal's answers. Riddler suggests <clears throat> he was left alive as an April Fool's prank. Batman suggests that his foe was left alive because Falcone wants the world to know he's looking for Holiday. Falcone is in his study. Sister Carla is furious that uh, he hired Poison Ivy, Riddler, Scarecrow, and Mad Hatter, which we've seen previously. Carmine Falcone uh, informs her that he doesn't need to explain himself. And then Dave's girl, Sophia Giganta, enters and uh, informs the siblings that they are ready. Uh, Samaroni is escorted to the courtroom where he's testifying against Falcone. Dent's corrupt assistant, Vernon, arrives and gives Maroni a bottle of stomach medicine. And Maroni expresses disbelief that Dent suddenly cares about his ulcer, but he takes the bottle. Uh, it's revealed that Sophia was calling her father and aunt downstairs for the Roman's birthday. And Maroni begins to confess to murders. He complains of his ulcer. Dent acts like it's the first he's heard this ailment. Dent asks the crime lord if he committed the murders under the order of the Roman. Maroni begins a coughing fit, reach for the bottle of medicine, uncaps it, and hurls the contents at the district attorney's face. Carmine Falcone blows the candles out on his birthday cake. Dent rides in agony. Maroni informs Dent the acid he's hurled is strong enough to eat through cement. He mocks his victim as he's dragged out of the courtroom and disgusted. Bruce Wayne is horrified. At the hospital, a surgeon enters the waiting room to find Gilda, Dent, and the Gordons, informs that Harvey is gone. He clarifies that he means literally as an escape before he uh, topples lifelessly into Jim Gordon's arms with a scalpel lodged in his back. And we close with Carla looking through the records of Gotham's corner. The shadowy figure of the holiday arrives and shoots her dead. 
She falls among piles of scattered files. All that shit happens in 22 pages. Shit, shit really picked up, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> shit really they tried to, they tried to, up. They tried to make up for what they, uh, you know, the, the pacing that they had in the previous issue. They're like, let's, 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 let's give them a little bit of... It's like, uh, yeah, it's kind of like that first season of The Punisher where, you know, you had, you had those first few episodes and, like, those middle episodes, Punisher didn't kill a single person for, like, five, six episodes. And then one episode, he murders, like, 30 people. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, start this usually by asking the exact same question. It feels like it's <laughs> redundant as shit. But Jermon, you got any ideas? <laughs> it looks more, and it still looks like it's more and more like Harvey. Like, this is, like, it, it's funny because, you know, at the beginning of the issue with his wife confronting him with the 22, like, it seems way <laughs> too obvious that it would be him. But, but at the same time, I was like, wait a minute. That doesn't, like, because his, his, of course, his excuse was, well, I always take my evidence, evidence home with me and stuff. It's like. It's like that that doesn't raise any red flags or anything. <laughs> uh, I would say let's say this issue has more breadcrumbs in it than just about any single previous issue. Mm-hmm. Like right. like in this issue, I feel like you could get to the end of this issue and have a viable theory about what's going on. Um Did you at this Your point? theory is in some way incorrect, almost inevitably. But but this one gives you enough to go on, I think. Mm. 11 issues and we finally have enough evidence to make some sort of probably incorrect theory. Yeah, pretty much. I, <laughs> I know I'm probably dead wrong. <laughs> so this issue leans heavy, like you just said, into the fact that uh, that it's shedding a lot of light <laughs> on Harvey. Are you, are you thinking Harvey or no? I'm still, like, that's the funny thing because I still... I can't even think of another person who would possibly have done it other than Harvey at this point still. Like there's cuz everybody else pretty much had a pretty solid alibi. Right on. Dave, let me ask you this question. Mm-hmm. Uh since a lot of evidence is pointing towards Harvey. Let's say you're reading a mystery book. Um and everything is saying that this is the person and you get to the end of that book and that is the person is that satisfying or disappointing? <clears throat> I would say that it's disappointing <laughs> for me, but uh, Benoit, Benoit Blanc might uh, disagree. Mm. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, no, 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 let's flip that. Let's flip that. Let's say that you're reading a murder mystery and all the evidence saying, this is the person, this is the person, this is the person, this is the person. And then you get to the end and it's not that person. Is that an unexpected twist or is it like, well, of, of course it wasn't the person they shined all the light on. Well, I, I like a good unexpected twist and I like some, some plausible misdirection. Okay. So yeah, I think we've talked before. Sense. I think we've right. talked before about the, uh, the Armageddon 2001 scenario where yeah. uh, <clears throat> like everybody figured out Monarch was Captain Adam. So they arbitrarily made him Hawk. Right at the end, it's like, you have to, if, if it's an earned twist, right? Like the narrative has to support this yeah. twist. And when I say that there's a lot of breadcrumbs in this issue, I think that this is the first issue that's, that offers real support for the twist. Mm-hmm. Um, right on. Uh, Please. Uh, offer support for a twist, <laughs> let's say. <laughs> Please. Please. Yeah, please tell me it's not rat ass Vernon. <laughs> hey, well, we've seen what he's capable of now. Yeah. Look, uh, I was going to say. I'll ask you. Oh, go ahead and ask your question, C. Uh No, I was just going to say, Vernon's still alive. So it's not like we can take him off the board. Oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> what were you going to say there? <laughs> My question to Jermon is, uh, since reading this issue, did you go back and read any of the previous issues? Good question. I have, I have not. Okay. And I probably will have to go back and like, especially getting closer to that last issue, <laughs> probably go back and do a reread or whatever, just to just to see what the hell is going on. You'll probably want to do it before the next issue. <laughs> uh, I disagree. I disagree. I say read the next issue, our penultimate, and then go back and reread it all right before you start the last issue. Okay. Mm-hmm. 
I, I agree. Uh, mm -hmm. Jamon, I will go out on record here and say that I envy slash pity you. <laughs> <laughs> um all right so the who's on Jermon? who could be on the list of suspects that's left so we saw carla show up and it's been like three four five maybe even issues since we've really seen her substantially which means like three four five months for us did you even remember she was a character in this joint not at all. I was <laughs> not at all. Like, I was like, where the hell has this sister been all this time? Like, That's a good I question, actually. She, they, she just kind of disappears. Was she in the New Year's issue or she was. She oh. was the she, she was the one in the New Year's issue who uh discovered that Alberto went over the side of the boat. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So I feel well, like I mean, you haven't seen her much since that particular issue. I mean, I guess she's got a pretty good alibi at this point, but yeah. uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, right on. So, yeah, who else besides Harvey could be on your list of suspects? Let's see. Um, God, because we know we well, you know it couldn't have been Sophia or whatever. She was um, she was locked up when it all started. She was locked up, and she was chasing after, um, or she went after the um, killer when um, when she tried to smoke um, Riddler. So we know that. She, let's see. So that's 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 ruled out. Let's see. We also have oh, evidence of her being at Dave's place during one of the murders. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. I do I've, think that I've, that I've that got the sex tape to prove it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I do think that if she were in prison, though, I think it wouldn't be much of a stretch to think that she just bent the bars and stepped out of the cell <laughs> and then came like, back and bent the bars back. Kind of like law-abiding citizen. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Nice pull to a movie that we've all forgotten about. Yes. <laughs> uh, okay, so see. yeah. Who else is on your list of possible? So Carmine, let's see. So Carmine, like, he was, well, no, he was um, around when his father got, or whatever, got killed. So that kind of kind of rules him out. Mm -hmm. Um. Let's see. Sal Maroney couldn't have, obviously couldn't have done it. <clears throat> he's been in court or whatever. Well, he's, he's detained. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see. Vernon seems like a complete dark horse here. <laughs> <laughs> Snitching ass Vernon. Yeah. Catwoman, she, I mean, she's kind of could be a suspect, but it's still kind of a long shot. Mm -hmm. Like, we really don't necessarily know a motive outside of her just <laughs> doing it just to do it. Uh, who else is there? Is left there on the table? Let me float this one by you. It's Jim Gordon, possibly. No, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> no. So you're you're left with a pretty small list outside of of Harvey, which is where all the light is shining. Yeah. Let me ask you this: uh, I, Look, I just asked Dave if, if it is indeed Harvey at the end. Do you think this is just a build up to, uh, to nothingness, or like, is there, would you be surprised if there's no real twist that they they played it straight? Not necessarily. I think it's a good uh, character study on Harvey Dent, and actually, you know, being able to see his, I guess, his fall and, um, you know, his transition into Two Face. <laughs> because I mean, that's kind of one of the themes of this series, where you see, like, like we had said before, you see you know, organized crime and the mobsters like ruling over Gotham and you see this transition into like the freaks and the, and the crazies. Mm -hmm. the freaks yeah, is, crazy. There is a lot in here about, you know, his, his gradual slide and, <clears throat> you know, something that you might want to think about German is if Harvey is committing those murders, how, how do we know Harvey Dent is even aware that two Face is killing people? Mm -hmm. Oh, Ooh. right. Yeah, like that could, that like he may be he may split. legitimately be playing dumb because he doesn't realize there's an evil side to him that's doing these things. Right, Dissociative right. identity disorder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Since we've seen the acid thrown in the face, you know, do we? Is that the? You think that could be the catalyst that actually brings those two separate entities together? We got that. There. Could be. Yeah. That could be the case. Uh, kind of like, kind of like his Jekyll and Hyde, and or whatever, and coming, you know, as Mister Hyde coming to the forefront. Yeah. Oh, that's a nice, nice analogy with Jekyll and Hyde there. 
Uh, so let's let's break down another question that we always ask. Uh, favorite panels, uh, uh, Dave. Let's start with you, man. What panel are you rocking with in this this issue? I'm actually rocking with two panels. You guys will never guess what they are. Uh, I got an ball. idea. Okay, yeah. got an idea. What's your two panels there, sir? <clears throat> so, Batman's in the bar. The get out of my place, and then the wrong answer. So it starts with wrong answer, and then it goes to the next page with not in the day. <clears throat> and I love this one specifically because I had to do a double take. He caught the first off, who the fuck knows about Batman and still tries to beat Batman? <laughs> <laughs> I get that, hey, we get, you know, you, you guys have been to conventions. You guys have seen really good Batman cosplayers. If you saw a Batman cosplayer in real life fighting crime in the daylight, you'd be like, oh, maybe I could take this guy. But then again. <laughs> <laughs> then again. So, so then that second panel comes in, <clears throat> and you see the barkeep getting tossed against the wall. But, and then remember this detail, the bat that he had thrown at, well, well, swung at Batman is shoved into his mouth. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. That's serious. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's how it's, it's the, the crit that Batman has during the day is like, you, you guys right. seen this giant bat that literally shoves bats into people's mouths? <laughs> right. <laughs> that's why he's the Batman. <laughs> <laughs> you failed the Batman. <laughs> you failed the Batman. Oh. <laughs> that's he's, how, he's that's how you spread your... your your cred in the daytime. He's like, Batman, why would you fear Batman in the, in the, in the daytime? No, he makes you suck his bat. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, this is not the only Batman year one story with a uh, homoerotic imagery in it. I just want to throw that out. That's very true. Mm -hmm. very true. He, he was probably pissed off enough just having to operate during the day. So I mean... <laughs> He's like, this is this. normal sleeping time. He's like, I should be asleep right now. <laughs> yeah, this is like 1 a.m. for Bruce Wayne. He's like, I got, a, I got a company to run, crying out loud. <laughs> Listen, this is, this is his, his shaft. I'm going to fuck you up if you make me run. Yeah. <laughs> Good call. Uh, Brian, what's your, uh, what's your, uh, your go-to panel here? I, uh, oh, man, that's a tough one. Because there are, there are so many just absolutely fantastic moments. They really are. In this issue. Um, <laughs> I think that, I think... Uh, something that's particularly good is the two pages right after Harvey has the acid thrown in his face. Mm. Uh, because damn, do you feel that? Yeah. Oh my God, it looks painful. And uh, yeah, it's the, two, the two pages of just him holding his hand over his face and you see his wedding band and it's his teeth that really do the trick. It's like, mm -hmm. man, those are more of Harvey Dent's teeth than I thought I was ever going to see. <laughs> uh, I will never looks... forget the sound of his screaming. Yeah. yeah. Oh, God. That is that is something else. Man, that's rough. <laughs> All right. right you know, and... Well, you know what we missed from that from that that exchange, that, that page? What? Hmm. We missed Val Kilmer, Batman, jumping across to try to save Harvey. Oh, yeah. Fully clothed <laughs> in the courtroom. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Forever. We will miss that. Forever. <laughs> they just let him into the courtroom like that. <laughs> I see what you although, did there. although what I'll say about that scene in Batman Forever is that Batman's appearance in this courtroom is only slightly more subtle. <laughs> <laughs> you see that giant two page spread of the courtroom and you're looking across the ground and I'm just scanning the crowd. I'm like, I bet I bet these are mostly people Tim Sale knows in real life. Oh, there's fucking Batman. <laughs> Just there in the back. And it's like, everyone in that courtroom, I guarantee you, knows that that is Batman right now. They're like, you think he's fooling people? Uh, you know what? I was going to wait to talk about it, but since you brought it up here, for the first time, this is the first time I think I fully scanned all the people in this courtroom. Did you catch the guy giving his girlfriend a bite of his sandwich? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right behind uh, Maroney's people. 
Yeah, it brings like, a sandwich to a court hearing. <laughs> <laughs> There's the people right behind them that look like they were just interrupted from like some heavy petting. <laughs> yeah. Like the guy next to them said, please stop. <laughs> what the fuck, bro? And then you see Batman. Sir, this is like, a Wendy's. <laughs> Yeah, because you see Batman off in the corner where he's, like, so inconspicuous. He's just, like, out there. like He's just internal monologuing right over there. He's just, like, the, the words, I am the knight, might as well just appear over his head right in the middle of the courtroom. Like, I was wondering, because uh, it had been a while since I read this issue, I was like, I wonder if Bruce is hiding out somewhere in here. And, like, and on the other side of the aisle, there's a dude in a suit with brown hair. And I was, like, right beside a guy with glasses. And I was like, well, maybe that's Bruce. And then I looked in the corner. And I was like, oh, there he is. <laughs> uh, and besides that guy giving his girl a sandwich, for me, that very first page, those big, wide, innocent, gilded dent eyes, trying mm -hmm. to figure out what's going on. Uh, I'm not sure why that part of her eye is green. I'm pretty sure that's not healthy. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, that's also another favorite of mine. It's, Jermaine, it's what about you? Iron deficiency. Oh, is that what it is? Okay. I actually like the that page um, <clears throat> where you actually where the acid actually gets thrown into uh, Harvey's face. Um, mm -hmm. It almost looks cinematic the way it flows, like where it, you see. Because I mean, everybody who's read Batman knows of the story of Two Face, and they know what's coming, but they um, don't even actually show the actual act, like the actual acid hitting him in the face, like it. Mm -hmm. It almost like a movie. It like cuts to that scene of um, Falcone blowing out the candles, which has uh, much more effect, I think. I yeah, he got his wish. You know how difficult it is to actually th throw fling liquid from a bottle that size. That's what I was thinking yeah. when I was reading it. Like he had to put a little bit of squeeze action into that. Yeah. yeah. Also, I'm not sure how they let him on the stand with that thing. Well, you 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 know. You know, part you know, medical reasons. You know, I mean, I mean, you got you got people bringing sandwiches into the courtroom. I mean, why not? Well, yeah, but they're not on, the on trial. Too. I mean, yeah, every, yeah, every, I'm sure. I'm sure everybody's too, on the take. Um, Maroni <laughs> knew what that was as soon as. Uh, well, Vernon gave it to him. Vernon Vernon gave it to him. He knew exactly what bitch. the what the request was, <laughs> and uh, yeah, yeah. I, I just think I think it, like half the people in that courtroom were lined up just to get Harvey Dent. <laughs> or line up just to yeah, just to get a good front row view of the of the epic fall of Harvey Dent. Um, and then on that same page there, another detail I don't know if I've ever noticed or just forgot I knew. As Harvey is questioning, there's two things that don't make sense to me here. Well, one thing doesn't make sense. One thing I noticed. The one thing I noticed is the last words you hear Harvey say as a full unblemished man. I'll ask you again, and he's holding up two fingers. Two fingers. Right yeah. there. Yeah, I was like, I don't, know if, I don't know if I ever picked up on that. But the thing that doesn't make sense to me that maybe you guys can explain is Moroni was Falcone's biggest rival, but Harvey asks Moroni, did he conduct murders at the orders of Falcone? But that makes no sense because they're rivals. So why would he be doing this? Why would Harvey ask that question? I don't understand. <clears throat> Any insight to that? Because that makes no sense to me. Yeah, I mean, I, uh, I don't says, know if they're just trying. I mean, I don't know if he's trying to blow the lid open on Holiday and trying to accuse Maroney, but the two of them have been working together. So, I mean, Sal came to him and said that he'd done work for, for the Roman before. Mm -hmm. So I think this was all, you know, scripted. They, I think, I think, I think that Maroney knew what to expect from the line of questioning. I think Dent thought he knew what to expect from the responses. Mm -hmm. um, but clearly the Roman got to Maroney and is... Uh, I would assume via Sophia. Pro probably. I mean, like, Well, I mean, you kind of see it from, from Dent's point of view. He wants to take down both of these guys. And here is a guy who, who is veritably singing like a canary. So let's say, what else can we get this guy to cop to? Maybe we can get two birds with one, two birds with one stone. <laughs> <laughs> right on, right on. Um, then the last, all the only other thing I wanted to bring up in this issue is, you know, we can't not talk about the murder of oh, yeah. Carla Vitti. So we find her clapped out at the Gotham City's coroner's office. Germain, would you have any idea or any inkling of a notion of why 
she would be digging through files at the Gotham City's coroner's office. Hmm, that's, I wonder if she, is she, I wonder if she's looking into it too, because some of, you know, Falcone's people got, got smoked too. I wonder, I wonder if she's the trying to- coroner got smoked as well. Yeah, maybe she's trying to do her own detective work to try to see if there's a link between these um, these victims or something or- uh, did that's, you... that's a big mystery. I, we don't see how she even arrived at uh, at wanting to do this. Yeah, right. she's, this is I would assume like a city building that should be locked up. <laughs> did she get well, in? but yeah. you see how you see how lax they are in the courtroom. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe she's uh, maybe she's the new coroner. <laughs> I got, I got a short job. list. A short list. No, no, they got to do better with those the only, checks. The only, the only person, uh, uh, like she's, she's lost. I mean, she's lost, you know, family and whatnot. But uh, she lost. Uh, well, that's that's the question. Who has she lost? Why would? She, why do you think she would be there? Well, Johnny. her father. Her father got killed too. Right? Yeah. Father. We, we son. get a, yeah, yeah, we, we get a shot of the, of the holiday files there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, did you read the names on those files there, Jamal? I read some of them, yeah. Of the I two read... that stand out, one is her son, uh, Johnny Vitti, which is the guy right. who gets it in issue one, and the other yeah. being Alberto Falcone, who is the New Year's that you were talking about, that we were talking about earlier. Right. So she's looking for something. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. 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 So Maybe. what this tells me, like, you know, it, it's it, when the coroner died on the 4th of July, yep. she dies for looking at the coroner's files. What this says is that there's a very simple explanation for all of this. And, uh, <laughs> and it's, it's right there in the coroner's office <laughs> is what seems to be the case. Right. Yeah. Right. Just don't look at those files, man. Don't try to look at the files. So, look at the files. So, so, so now that we've, uh, we've pointed your eyes towards those files, Jermon, is there anything that you can can piece? Anything you want to tell us? Yeah, anything you want to tell us? <laughs> you're, you're on you're on the stand now, Jermon. I did it. Where were you? Throw some acid in his face, real quick. I was the third. I was the third one on that grassy knoll. It was me. <laughs> <laughs> the immortal time lord, snacking Jackson. I was the I was the real killer. OJ was looking for. I, it was me. I did all the crimes. <laughs> <laughs> He's also the guy who stole OJ's merchandise from him too. <laughs> no, that was just his dumb ass. <laughs> <laughs> Can't claim that one. Uh, so yeah, yeah, I, I it, think it, clues are starting to to lead us down uh, a path or two. Hmm. Hmm. Is there anything you're expecting out of next issue, Javon? Who's left to kill is the better question. <laughs> yeah, that's a good. Because if it you have a was- small list of of suspects, that's also a very small list of who's <laughs> relevant left to kill too, right? They would literally have to like create somebody to bring in next issue just to kill. Like, <laughs> yeah, Grandma Rose walking down the street, <laughs> everything goes black and white. Unless I'll tell you uh, what, though, something that you're probably not looking forward to in the next issue is the least expected team up of all. And when it happens, your heart will be warmed. Oh wow! That's Vernon and his twin brother. <laughs> no, 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 but it'll be close, close. We're going to see the return of a, an old friend who, like Jermon, enjoys snacking. Mm-hmm. I, I do kind of want to see, I, I want to see Vernon get his, though. I do, I really do. <laughs> I do, too. I, like, this is, one thing I will say about the read-through this time is that I have paid far more attention to Vernon than ever before. Like, <laughs> when I read this the first time, it's like, who the fuck cares about Vernon? But, like, now it's like, Vernon is like a weaselly son of a bitch. He is, he is. <laughs> He's that dude where if like you find out like he's like the killer at the end of the movie, and then you go back and watch the movie, and he's just a background. He's the cook in Hunt for Red October. Yeah, he's just <laughs> the whole time. in the background this whole time, gleaning information. So, uh, how would you rate Jermon this issue eleven? As we are on our mad dash run to the end, did you? This is how would this rate as far as the issues we've read so far? This is probably. I would say this is probably one of the best that I've I've read so far. I agree. A lot of, yeah, the uh, yeah, plot, a lot of great plot advancement. Um, the the imagery was just just spectacular. I think. Yeah, this, this was, was just good bathroom writing on Loeb's part. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! 
this is probably the best thing Globe has, will or has ever done in life. Like easily, <laughs> not, <laughs> like, easily. Not as kids, nothing like that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, Dave, uh, how would you rate this issue, man? Did you do? Because I agree with your mind. I think this is one of the better issues of the series. Yeah, I think so. I, I, and I agree with uh, <clears throat> with Brian as well. Uh, we get a lot more breadcrumbs to kind of um, kind of build towards the this uh, this crescendo. Um, I, I'd rate it. I'd rate it high. It's it's one of my favorite episodes. The issues. <laughs> right on. Right on. And what about you, there, Mr. Martin? Oh, I love it. Uh, yeah, this this one has the moments like there are some just <clears throat> iconic moments in this issue that I remember just very fondly. Batman's encounter with Riddler, and Riddler's all just you know jacked at the bar, like just a drunk, piss ass drunk, ten a.m. <laughs> because Riddler knew it was International Beer Day, <laughs> August second. Yeah, um, I, I love the scene at the beginning where where Guild is looking up at Harvey, and he's going up the staircase. The are we having this discussion? moment uh where he just tries to completely avoid having the discussion with her uh the courtroom but that look on dent's face is the acid splashes into his face it's like whatever your misgivings are about harvey dent at this point in the series that part is just like <clears throat> this cat didn't deserve this like yeah, whatever he's mixed right. up in whatever he's been doing that's a little bit uh you know uh, maybe illegal uh is not worth what he's about to get and what's about to happen. So uh, mm-hmm. it's just, there, there, are, there's a lot in here for just people who know the Batman mythos. It's like the moment and the issue that we've kind of just dreaded for mm-hmm. uh, the entire run of the series. Yeah, as soon as Harvey pops up for the first time you see him, you're like, oh, as, as a fully fleshed man, yeah. you're like, oh, well, mm, he ain't got much longer there, Harvey. Too. Hey, enjoy that skin, buddy. <laughs> 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 and, and yeah, you talk about old, old, Innocent Eyes Gilda there. Uh, it seems like their relationship has done a complete 180 then from where the series started off, right? That's- it's, almost like a, it's almost like a Walter White thing where you're finally like, you know, at that point where Skylar finally sees what he's up to and is like, ugh. Yeah. <laughs> trying to decide whether she can continue the ride or abandon ship. Yeah. He's just, he's losing himself to Gotham. Like, Gotham is gradually seeping into him, and it's corrupting him. Yep. And and I think the person we saw in issue one versus the person we see in issue ten, it's like Gilda is aware that this is, <clears throat> that, that she's losing him, that she's lost him. And, and that's uh, that's refers back to that conversation in the last issue between her and uh, Barbara Gordon. Of that she she knows exactly what's going on. I think Gilda's no idiot, and she knows that she's she's losing her man to the the horribleness that is this city. My, maybe not even Gotham, just this particular case in general. <laughs> like if if Harvey's first big test had been something a little bit more simple, <clears throat> simpler, we wouldn't have this. But uh, yeah, this case in particular has just completely wrecked this man. Unfortunately, yeah. I just hope we don't uh, wrecking wrecking men. <clears throat> um, what I would like, and this is this is just for you, Jermon. Mm-hmm. I would like when you when we get to that last issue. I would like for you to put your phone on selfie mode and record yourself <laughs> reading the issue because I want to get I want to get <laughs> your actual response, your reaction to it. If we could do a live read, that'd be great. But I'd, I'd like to, if you can gift that to me, good sir, I would, I would greatly appreciate it. I, I really want to know your your in the moment reaction as you finish that issue. That's this, good. You know, the, the way the whole story ends is with uh, Batman throwing the gun into a fire and saying, eh, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> But I, I think if, those, if, um, if you can do that, Jermon, I think we should like all watch that and then record the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I like You're it. You're gonna get one of those uh, one of those Padme moments or whatever. <laughs> You're going down a path I can't follow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's all I got for this issue, guys. Um, you know, this is the the birthday issue. This is the Roman's birthday. He definitely got his gift. I think that's fairly safe to say uh so let's talk about birthdays real quick what do you uh what do you guys usually 
in a world where we're, where we're able to move about unfettered without the fear of viruses, mm. what do you guys usually do for your birthdays? Do you have any birthday rituals? Any places you like to go eat at? Anything like that? <clears throat> um, me personally, um, you know, the last few years, I've, I've kind of tried to make it somewhat of a big deal to celebrate my birthday. And um, I think the last few years I've been going to, you know, invite people over to Dave and Buster's and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. This past year I went to, um, went to Frankie's, which was, Oh my God, that place was so awesome. That place me, and me and Brian, man, we were, we had a <clears throat> blast there. Yeah. Yeah. That was good. Oh my God. Sad was, I had to work. Sad I had to work. Damn. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. Cause I, I've it, seen Jermon's birthday parties like in, in like there's, there's an actual event that it's created, in. <laughs> and I, I've missed them. I've missed them each time. I, I'm I'm definitely going to make them to make it to one of your at least one of your birthday uh, blowouts, man. Because I've been wanting to go there and like say, you know, you're a cool dude, and I want to celebrate you too. So yeah, yeah. The dude, city shuts like, down when Jermon birthdays. It's yeah. like it's it's like Chuck E. Cheese for grownups, man. I swear, it's like. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, why? Why did you choose not to go DMB? Is because they had because they had the shooting there at the Mills one. Is that what happened? Yeah, Something I think crazy? that was it. Yeah, I think this past year, um, I was like, well, yeah, it was that, and then I was like, you know, I kind of want to do something different. I've been here for the last three years. It's mm. changed up a little bit, and then yeah, that that was like right around the time when that shooting went down. So yeah. Happy birthday, Jack. Yeah. Change change venue. <laughs> <laughs> grand opening, grand closing. I'll tell you what was fun. Um, because like some of the stuff you'll discover, because you know, you know, you, arcades are just kind of now coming back um, or whatever. But you don't see a lot of new games. Yeah. And uh, Frankie's, they had a, I guess, a newer Ninja Turtles arcade game, which kind of oh, played like the old school, you know, um, game. Hmm. And with like the Nickelodeon, game. like modern day aesthetic. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. And it was, I tell you, <laughs> me and Brian were playing. It was more fun watching like this father and son pull up and play than it was playing ourselves because they were they were just so into it yeah because it's a four-player game we're but two men and and yeah. and so there were we're there's sort of a rotating cast of people that came and, and joined in and eventually his father and son joined in and just ran the fucking table yeah. i mean it hmm. cost them a pretty penny because i mean <laughs> you sit down at any any arcade game ever and you're shoving coins into it now it's more like you're shoving dollars into it to continue yeah um yeah, so it's uh, insert your credit card and just <laughs> yeah right ins ins open insert kidney you know it's <laughs> <laughs> but it was yeah it was fun because you know i think the son comes up and he's like hey can i join in he's like hell yeah and you know he jumps in then he, he comes in like gets his father's like come on dad come on dad his dad's like oh yeah i love ninja turtles and that that, nice. that was awesome to see and that dad was named kevin eastman <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 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 um yeah uh what uh what other traditions do you guys dave is there anything that you uh that you normally do for birthdays anything, my birthday uh, is uh september 3rd and so usually like in the past it's it's been a day that either uh you know falls on labor day in which you know school is out and as a as a lad i was a you know nerd geek uh, you know didn't you know only had one best friend so uh i ended up doing a lot of stuff by myself and um and just, it, it kind of turned into just like a day for me kind of stuff, you know? So um, over the years, I've started doing more of a, hey, let's get, you know, let's get a bunch of people together and celebrate that kind of thing. Like, uh, I think one year I went to, uh, went to MAGFest. Uh, my girlfriend at the time uh, went with me to MAGFest and I spent the time uh, drinking, uh, going to concerts, playing video games and uh, lots of sex in the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> so it was yeah, that was that ranked very high on my on my birthday memory list. That's, that's yeah. Oh, that's what's up. Right that's, that's, I mean, yeah, that's a, that's a great birthday. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know what, Dave? So far, you are. I'm sorry, Javon. I love Frankie. He's cool and all, but yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll bequeath it to him, man. He's, he's winning right now. <laughs> uh, so you're a September third, uh, Javon. You're a February, right? If I remember. Yeah, Dan for Valentine's. Yeah, Dan for Valentine's. And what about yeah. you, Mr. Martin? My birthday is uh, November twenty second, <clears throat> which means that about once every six years, my birthday falls on Thanksgiving. Yeah. And about once every 
four to six years, I was getting a James Bond movie for my birthday. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So those, are the, as far as traditions go, those are the only traditions. Now, my birthday does fall on a Thanksgiving. You can rest assured my mother will forget my birthday exists. <laughs> um, I will get very deep into that day, perhaps even to the next day before she remembers that I had a birthday to celebrate. But I was thinking about memorable birthdays when I was reading this and, and I, I'm not really one for doing a big uh, all hands on deck get together or stuff. Jacqueline, my wife usually schedules something or tries to get people together. Like we did a Bari a couple years ago or did one of those science on the rocks nights at um, discovery, discovery place. place. <clears throat> yeah. My 30th birthday, my 40th birthday this past year were kind of big to do's that she really tried to actively surprise me with by pulling in, all sorts of people and just kind of mm-hmm. surprising me with this just cavalcade of people that just kind of wanders in and shows up like Jermon was there at one point and, and yeah, I, was like, I was i was there the last and i was like i was like oh hey what are you doing and i was like oh oh shit he's here because it's my birthday <laughs> I get, like at that point it had just been everybody i was just taking it in stride but um, I just I, yeah, I just happened to be in Asheville. yeah what the hell? <laughs> hey, hey what are the odds to Jermon. <laughs> <laughs> i think um but with regards to batman um my 10th birthday happened to fall one week after the VHS release of oh, Tim Burton's Batman movie, oh, nice. uh, which, I, which I did not see in theaters. So my birthday that year was a Saturday afternoon with a bunch of my friends watching Batman. That's awesome. Uh, at my parents' house. And, uh, and, and I don't think my parents realized the PG-13-ness of it at the time. And even better. Uh, so there are a couple. I mean, it's a fairly, it's a fairly sexual, horny movie. I think. <laughs> so, <laughs> you got Prince on the soundtrack. That's what you're gonna get. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's it's pretty horny. So uh, so there was that. But uh, I mean, like that was that was a birthday for the record books because normally m- I wasn't necessarily the kid in our cir- circle of friends that was at the forefront of anything. But I was the only one who had like a VHS copy of Batman. Mm in november of 89 so that was like a big thing (laughs) that's pretty cool that's pretty what about you seed uh you know what i was thinking about it earlier and i don't have a whole lot of birthday memories like get some friends you're pretty pretty, you passed out most of the time (laughs) (laughs) usually that's like 9 45 p.m on my birthday um (laughs) This is the sort of thing. I thought this was a buildup for. I don't really have a lot of birthday memories. You know, it's just kind of one of those things that when you're 26, you haven't really lived very much, and you don't really. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, one of those things where you try to just trim off a decade, just real, yeah. <laughs> real, <laughs> real casual. We're like, yeah, I do. We a couple people. We uh, get to a bar. We did a bar one year, much like uh, young Martin down there. Um, as far as memories go, the the first one I had in Korea in '05 was a fairly good one. We had a, a nice size, like 15 people crew uh, bar hopping all throughout our, our little town in Korea. And that was a real great night. And what I was aware of when I was sober enough to, when I blacked back in that night, uh, that the party had grown at some point. And I was just like, who are they? Are they with us? They're with us? Okay, well, I guess come on through. What I did not know is one of the stops we went to, someone else was celebrating their birthday with like four or five people, just kind of like, you know, chilling out in the corner, drinking, enjoying themselves. And mm-hmm. we came in just live as fuck. Like we came in and, and, and got the, the party popping. And then when we left, they were like, we're going with them. And they left that poor birthday girl by herself. What? Yeah. And then they joined our party and left. And it was somebody I knew. And she hated me for the rest of my time in the Air Force. Because <laughs> I, I railroaded one birthday party, which was not my doing or my intention at all. Uh, I had no idea what was happening. But she, uh, she, she should have she kept up. She, <laughs> maybe if you had better friends. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, these days, like I'm here, I don't have that same... Uh, super close-knit circle of friends uh like i did when i was in the military mm. so nowadays the birthdays are are fairly low-key deals go out and eat with the family and you know 
pick up some drinks somewhere and that's really about it. So your favorite birthday is when you Shanghai at someone else's birthday. Oh, definitely. <laughs> That's probably the most gangster <laughs> shit I've ever heard. <laughs> Let me yeah. tell you, uh, <laughs> that something similar happened to me a, a few years. Um, I used to go to Hooters with my, with my buddies a lot on um, Sunday nights. We watched like wrestling pay-per-views, football or whatever. And I went one year on my birthday with my buddies and they were going to get the, you know, the, the Hooters ladies to sing happy birthday to me as they normally do. So I see them, I see them gathering up and I'm like getting excited and everything. And they go to my buddy and start singing because his birthday is a week after mine. <laughs> and then my, and then another friend of ours literally comes out of nowhere. It's like, yeah, I knew it was his birthday. So I told him that it was Oh, you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jermon cried into his curly fries that night. Uh, oh, oh, here, here's the kicker. Like, it, we went back a few years later, literally the same. It was birthday once again. I was like, oh, yeah, we're going to get, we're going to get these, these ladies to sing for you for your birthday and all this stuff. So I was hmm. like, okay, cool, cool. This cannot happen again. Um, <laughs> ladies gather up. <laughs> they go over to some other dude's table. It just happened to be his, like, I think it was his 21st birthday. I was like, no! <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> your mom will never get the respect he deserves on his birthday in a Hooters in North Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like, ladies, it was my, it's my birthday too. They were like, yeah, right. I put on my glasses and like, <laughs> ladies like, well, why did you say anything? I just did. <laughs> Oh, that is hilarious. That is, that's <laughs> wonderful. That is wonderful. Um, yeah, I guess that's a good time to, to go ahead and wrap this up after such an astounding story from Javon. <laughs> uh, we'll be back next episode with Labor Day, right? It'll be our Labor yeah. Day, <clears throat> Labor Day episode, our penultimate right. of this year long conquest that we've been working our way towards, man. This next one's a big one. This next one's a, a doozy. Technically, I've had the, we've had basically had the longest Labor Day ever now. For you. Yeah, <laughs> I was thinking about that earlier. It's like we picked a hell of a year to read the long Halloween. It's like the longest <laughs> year in recorded history. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. Uh, when is Labor Day? I have no idea. It's, it's, on, it's usually a Monday, isn't it? Well, it's always it a is, Monday. Um, the seventh or something like that. Seventh. Okay, the so seventh. you know, a month from now, a month and a couple of days from now, you'll get a new episode of the Long Halloween. Uh, you know what? I might just fuck around and read this uh, issue eleven right. We're done recording because now we're getting to the fuzzy parts. Like I'm not sure what happens in this issue, and I'm really curious and looking forward to it. Hopefully, you guys are looking forward to it too. So, on behalf of uh, Brian Martin, Jermont Jackson, and Ninja Dave, it's me, Seed, and we will see you next time round.